On today's episode of Locked On 76ers, the Dwayne Dedman edition is official. He is now a 76er for the second time after McDaniels, Jalen, and now Dedman. Is this enough or do the Sixers need to do more? We'll talk about it next right here. Locked On 76ers. You are Locked On 76ers, your daily Philadelphia 76ers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. First time users can receive a hundred percent instant deposit match up to a hundred dollars with promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com promo code locked on. What's good, D? A Wednesday night, man. That's that's what's good. Uh, a final game of before the All Star break. That's what's good. <laughs> that's what's good. Welcome everybody. You're locked on 76ers. I'm Devon Gibbons from 97.5 Father Fanatic Radio in Philadelphia, alongside my co-host and partner, as always, Keith Von Pay, Sixers beat writer for TheInquirer.com. We want to thank you for making Locked On 76ers your first listen every day. And remember, Locked On 76ers is free and available on all platforms, including right here at YouTube on Locked On 76ers. Well, Keith is finally official. Dwayne Dedman is back with the 76ers. Looks to be your primary backup going forward for the stretch run and into the postseason. We'll talk about that and more of is this enough between he and Jalen McDaniels acquired at the trade deadline? Do they have enough now with these two additions or should they look to do something more? We'll get into another uh, acquisition or a a move uh, that has been made by the 76ers. They have brought up and promoted to a two way deal. Mac McClung of the Delaware Blue Coats. What does that mean? Julian Champagny. He is now out. And we'll, of course, get ready and preview the final game against the Cleveland Cavaliers tonight in South Philadelphia. All right. Well, Keith, man, it's official between Jalen McDaniels on Thursday at the trade deadline and now made official on Tuesday. Dwayne Dedman is the sixer. So you have the wing and you have the big. And remember, when we would talk about this. Uh, maybe around game 30, 35, and we talked about what we have seen so far and what they might need. The two things that we focused on outside of the point guard, which we will get to, I'm sure, was a wing and a big man. And they have done both uh, during this acquisition time between the trade deadline and the buyout period for the veteran guys that were available. Now, is this enough? Do they need to do more? Uh, You were one that was big on a point guard position as a backup. Do they do they have enough? Have they done enough? Should they look to do something more? You know, I, I keep going back and forth on this one because um, I don't have the numbers ahead of me, but I think all they can afford is like six hundred thousand. Now, mm-hmm. again, it's, it's one of those things where let's keep it real. Like it would be one of those things where the NBA will pick up something for like a veteran guy. Like for instance, um, don't don't quote me on this, but it, typically what happens is a veteran will get a veteran minimum, but they're only allotted X amount of money on the books. So then the league would take care of the rest of it. Uh, I think it goes something like that. But even with that, I think you have to have a certain threshold in order for you to get that type of player, right? Now, the the, the deal is, though, here, here's the thing. I keep going back and forth with this because if, if, um, if, if Tyrese Maxey – can be that scorer off the bench if you want to continue to bring him off the bench, if you want to continue to bring him off the bench, if he can be that scorer off the bench, then you don't need one, right? You know what I mean? Um, In regards to like a point guard, it's great to say you got a traditional point guard, but at the same time, James Harden is going to be extremely ball dominant. Maxie's going to be ball dominant. So it's one of those things where you just don't want to get somebody to get them and you're not going to use them. Now here, me, I keep me. This may be something that you and I may debate about. Like, I think that this team can cannot have enough tough players. You cannot have enough agitators, especially in the Eastern Conference, where you got Boston, you have Cleveland, you have uh, Milwaukee. I think that if they go out there and if they can some way somehow get a Pat Bev. Now, again, you got to have somebody to keep them in check, so to speak. 
But I believe if you could get somebody like Pat Bev, that can give you a mental edge from a standpoint. Now, there are certain people who don't like that, but I'm just here to tell you, though, I can see Pat Bev chirping, uh, doing some things against Boston, against Milwaukee, against Cleveland, getting underneath guys' skin. So if, if I had an opportunity to try to go out and get that guy just to be an agitator off the bench, you know, I think I would really look into it, man. I, re- I really would. Uh, I'm indifferent on that one because two years ago, Pat Beverly, yes. Pat Beverly leaving the Los Angeles Clippers, yes. Uh, the Pat Beverly in Minnesota for that year when they made it to the playoffs in the play-in tournament and he jumped on the scores table and was very excited, crying because they made it in there, Yes. That was I don't last know about year. this one. That nah. was last year, though. That was last year. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, he looked like he's falling off a cliff here uh, as far as his basketball goes. Now, the agitator part, that's never going to leave. That's why he was in the league. That's what he talks about. Of Yes, he could play, but he also understands what keeps him in the league and what he does. Uh, I guess the newer version of that might be, without all the chirping, Jose Alvarado for the New Orleans Pelicans, that type of guy uh, to a certain extent. But uh, I... If they did it, I, I understand it. I just don't know that he can play anymore. And in order to be that agitator still, you, you know, you're going to still have to have that respect on the basketball side too, or, or else you're just out there being an agitator. And how many minutes is he going to be out there to agitate? How many minutes is he going to be out there taking away from between Harden, Melton, and Maxi? Those are your three primary guard minutes that are going to be eaten up by them. And when we talk about the three-guard rotation, even still, uh, unless you're just looking at Beverly, Melton, and let's say Harden, because you want those two just 94 feet dogging whatever players bring the ball up. I get that. There's still something about them, though, watching them from afar and seeing where he is right now. And it looks like he's just, it, I, to me, it looks like he's done uh, as a, a player that's going to make a difference in, in a way on the team. But – when you do talk about the stuff that you're pointing out against Marcus Smart in the playoffs, Darius Garland in the playoffs, uh, Kyle Lowry in the playoffs, those types of players that we're speaking of, Drew Holiday in the playoffs, I get it. Yeah, I get it. I also don't want to make him one of those boneheaded moves that's going to cost you in the end of the game because he wants to dig all up in somebody's jersey trying to make a point about being an agitator. So it's a fine line with, with Patrick Beverly. Understand it. But I would say no. If they did it, I get it, but I'm against it. You know, yeah. But see, here's the thing about his – I get it. He averaged six points this year. But look, man, like – I never mistaked him but, for a scorer. No, <laughs> I'm no. Just saying, I, I get, I'm respecting him on the floor also as a basketball player in order for him to earn those minutes. You know, here's the thing. I think the Lakers are a mess. The Lakers yeah, were a mess. So true. you got him. So, and it's like, you know, and it like he had a great quote. He was on a podcast recently, and his quote was, it wasn't basketball. It wasn't basketball. It wasn't basketball. He said it three times, right? He said it was other stuff. I'm just going to say stuff. But other stuff that you really can't, like, pin or point out, you know, comes and goes. You know, a little bit of here, a little bit of there. And that's just telling me it was a it was a mess, man. Like it really was a mess in LA. Now, when you look at him, he played in and started 45 games for the Lakers, averaging 6.4 points, 3.1 rebounds, and 2.6 assists. But everyone struggled. And if you look at the Lakers, you know, it's all about LeBron. Like, you know, LeBron, and it should be, but it's all about him. And, you know, you know, he's the he's the head of the snake, so to speak. And and you know, again. We're, we're looking at guys who sometimes you got to have that mentality. You got to have somebody at practice who's oh, going to be me. Like, you know, I love that side of it. Yeah. You know it. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. all for technical. Go get a tech. Well, well not, not just that, but I, I think to a point where Joel Embiid doesn't want to practice one day, you need somebody in there that got enough heart to say, look, big fella, you ain't do nothing. Get, get your tail out there and practice. You know, you need somebody who's going to like, you know, mess it up a little bit, muck it up at practice. You know, you need you need that dog. I mean, when you look at the guards, yeah, you have DeAnthony Melton. Um, you know, you have uh, Daniel House 
as as a, a guard that has that dog, but he doesn't really play. Like you know what I mean. And DeAnthony Melton's kind of been struggling. Like well, you know the rest of them. Is, that's what PJ. Yeah, but he ain't. A, but he's not a guard though. He's not he a guard. Be a guard. It's yeah. about the it's about the guy who has the guts to stand up to your point and say what needs to be said. Yeah, but I'm talking about against other teams too. Like a guard. I want to. I want a ferocious. I'm tacking you guard. Like, you know what I mean? I want somebody that's going to be an agitator. No, but you know, when you said again, the practice part of getting in the oh, yeah, the practice too. I'm but, talking about PJ Tucker is that type of dude. Yeah, he is. He is, but you need more. You need more. Because sometimes when you that type of dude and you're around a lot of nice guys, it's kind of like it gets drowned out a little bit. You know what I mean? I mean, it's kind of like I just like the swag. Now, again, you know, they can do it, they cannot, but they can't. But I just think that, you know, this team needs to be a little bit more tough. I mean, especially when we're talking about in the playoff series against Boston, you know what I mean? Because Marcus Smart is going to try to trade punk dudes, for lack of a better word. You know what I mean? He is. So Yeah. No, and again, uh, if it was – I don't know the other name, but when you, if you presented another name, I would be on – on it but for this one and as you said he started 40 something games who else were they going to start it, like you said there's a lot of stuff going on in la also a big part of that is their roster <laughs> the roster stinks and yeah. that's why he started and of course he wouldn't come here to start he would be on the backup uh situation but i understand it keith I, I get it i'm not saying you're wrong for me i'm just saying no if they did it they did it for a reason and let's see if it works out That'll be another Houston Rocket, though, as you talk about, that is coming in town uh, if they did, in fact, do that. What do you guys think? Guys, gals, Sixer fans out there, let us know at Pompeii on Sixers on Twitter, at Devon G975 on Twitter. Let us know what you think. Patrick Beverly, yes or no? All right, we take a quick break. We come right back. We get into uh, Mac McClung getting a two-way deal, getting called up, Keith, getting the – getting the, he, he earned it. He's going to be an all-star weekend and all that stuff. Don't contest. He's now on the two-way deal. Julian Champagne gone. Uh, what does this mean for the Sixers? And would he actually see some burn out there for the big club? We'll talk about it next right here, Locked On 76ers. Let's talk about prize pick, right? So here we go, prize pick. Tonight I'm taking Luka Donich to score more than 26.5 points. LeBron James to have more than 7.5 rebounds. Kevin Durant, Kevin Durant to have less than 6.5 assists. And Steph Curry to have more than 3.5 steals, right? How does this work? What you do is you pick two to six players, and if they will go score more or less than their prize pick projections, you can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. No competing against other people. It's just you and the projections available. Prize picks offers projections on any spot um, uh, uh, that you watch, any spot, sport, whatever, right? So you can do football, college basketball, women's basketball, WNBA, esports, NASCAR, NBA, of course, NHL, all that. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. Safe and fast withdrawals, currently operational in 30 states and Canada, right? So how you do this is to call the action is you go and download Prize Picks app or go to prizepick.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can re receive 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code locked on. If you deposit $100, prize pick will give you 100. If you deposit 50, prize pick will give you 50. Don't forget to enter the promo code locked on at sign up for the instant deposit match up for $100. Welcome back to Locked On 76ers. We thank you again for making Locked On 76ers your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Now podcast for nightly recaps of every NBA game with analysis from our local experts. It's free and available wherever you do get your podcast. All right, man. Uh, the big thing here, big thing here uh, for the Sixers two way contract, Mac McClung, man. Uh, what, what do you think? Uh, Julian Champagne out, Mac McClung averaging 19 points for, to lead the team in scoring with the Blue Coats and also shooting 50% from beyond the three point line uh, there, Keith. What, what do you make of this? Is this just something that they, they're rewarding him for his time with the Blue Coats or are they actually looking to maybe give him a little bit of run? 
I mean, I, I think what they do is, is, is a it could be getting re- rewarded, but I think it's one of those things where Daryl wants to get a give this guy a look. I mean, you if you look at it, I mean, they've had no one since I since Daryl Morey has been here a two way player who stayed on all year. It's like you know, guys come here, you know, they're gung ho, they 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 go to the G League, they play in a couple games with the Sixers, they practice with them. And then all of a sudden, it comes another guy a couple months later. And the thing about Matt McClung, you know, you kept hearing the hype about him and everybody's talking about how good he is. He's in the slam dunk contest. You kind of knew it was going to be a matter of time before they would bring him up, right? You you kind of figured that something would happen, right? Um, also, the timing is, I guess it's the perfect timing for him and for the Sixers because they're about to go to the All-Star game. And, hey, you know, it's better. Like, yes, it was great to say you were with the G League team, but now you're going to have the the Philadelphia 76ers uniform, uniform on. You're going to have the PR department there besides the G League PR department. So it's going to be a little bit more official. But in regards to him helping, I mean, I don't, I don't know if any G League guy right now would really help the 76ers, you know, because let's face it. Doc Rivers, A, doesn't play these young guys, and B, the thing about G League stats, and you know this, they're hard to compare. Like, you get a lot of guys who go down to the G League and they produce these crazy numbers, and when they come up to the NBA and they can't do it. The concern is if a guy goes down to the G League and he can't produce, that's when you say to yourself, like, maybe we got the wrong one. So, you know, I mean, I don't I don't think that I mean, I could be wrong, but I I don't think that this is about, okay, we're going to depend on Matt McClung. I think it's more like we're going to give Matt McClung a a good hard look. Okay, well, he'll be in the all star uh, weekend, as you talked about, slam dunk contest on Saturday night. So we'll see what he does representing now the Philadelphia 76ers and the Delaware Bluecoats as a two two way player for for the Sixers. Uh, yeah, especially when you're talking about a guy like Patrick Beverly versus Mac McClung, we know where we lean. All right, final segment on the other side. Mac McClung. Yeah, Mac McClung, number nine. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll get into some of the keys to the game tonight against the Cleveland Cavaliers, Donovan Mitchell, Darius Garland, and company coming into town. We'll talk about it next here on Locked On 76ers. And as you get ready for the springtime, as we getting man, think about it. We're already in mid-February with just 15, 14, what, 13 more days to go in the month of February. We're going to get into March. You, know, you want to make sure that you get a little closer to the summer. You got your body right. Everything's all good. Your health is great. And you're looking for a delicious treat when you want that snack. You have that urge, but don't want all the fat and the calories. Then you got to go try a built Bar. I keep telling you, when you just walk through the holidays, you get through everything, all the food, you burn off all those calories. I know your goal, like many, was to eat a little healthier this year. If you're like me, and where you want to eat a little healthier but don't want to compromise that taste, then I've got something for you. Go try the Built Bar. With Built, healthy is actually tasty. Seriously, it's so delicious you won't even think they're good for you, perfect for that New Year's resolution and more going forward. What makes them so great? Well, for starters, 100% real chocolate. That's right, 100% real chocolate with flavors, churro, peanut butter, brownie, and coconut almond, only 130 calories, four grams of sugar with a whopping 17 grams of protein. And now you don't even need to wait to get a box. No more just going to built.com and order them. You can also get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club. That's right. Head to your nearest Walmart today. Walk to the pharmacy section and grab yourself a built bars. That's a big box of four of cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puffs. If it works out better for you, go in the Sam's Club, run in, grab a 13-bar box with our hit flavors, brownie batter and churro. Folks, you will thank me later. Welcome back. Locked on 76ers. Sixers hosting the Cavaliers. Final game before the All-Star break. Game 56 tonight. The Sixers have 37 wins with 19 losses. The Cleveland Cavaliers, 38 and 22. Keith, the Sixers have a one-game lead based on a 56 game schedule here and uh now you know a 60 game schedule so far between these two teams they have the edge on cleveland at this moment so when you look at this one tonight a one game lead over cleveland cleveland blew the Sixers out in the first matchup in cleveland ohio 
Uh, this one tonight, what are you focused on? What's the key matchup or a few maybe key points for this game tonight? Oh, there's a bunch of matchups. Now, first of all, the biggest matchup to me is, and this is one that a lot of people aren't really talking about, is Donovan Mitchell and DeAnthony Melton, right? You know, because you you got to figure that Donovan, uh, DeAnthony Melton is going to draw that guard, right? You, 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 you're going to draw that assignment. I agree. So, so to me, that's the matchup. I mean, I, I get it, the Embiid and the Jared Allen and all that other stuff. Um, but to me and and Eric Mobley, who's gonna guard him, but you gotta you gotta stop the head of the snake. And you know, these this could be one of those games where you know you're either gonna say, Hey, we miss Matisse Thibel, or you're also gonna say we wanna see what Jalen McDaniels can do against him. But it all starts with the Anthony. Melton going up against Donovan Mitchell, who's averaging 27.2 points, four rebounds, 4.9 assists, right? So to me, that is the number one matchup that I want to see. The number two matchup, that's a great one, of course. Mitchell had 41 in the last game against San Antonio. Is the Evan Mobley versus, I'm guessing, Tobias Harris? Because Mobley is very active. He can, you know, the double doubles. He has a quick second jump. He has a little bit of a height advantage over Tobias Harris, runs the floor very well. And a lot of his work offensively comes from offensive rebounds and those guys setting him up when he does run the floor and in the half court set. But he can find a way to get 15 to 16 points just by his activity. And Tobias Harris, who has been good in that role, is going to have to match that type of player uh, when we see them out there tonight. So that one I'm very curious to see as a double double type of guy and and if he is on the other side matched up where Mobley is defending him pulling him away from the basket uh is going to be good for the Sixers to be able to get their drives to the basket and then be to work on Jared Allen one-on-one so that one's going to be key for me Mitchell of course with Melton and I think the Mobley Harris matchup is going to be one to watch as well tonight yeah, yeah. I mean, that's going to be that. That's going to be nice. Now, another thing is for certain, it's, it's a lot of pretty good ones. I mean, of course, the Jared Allen and B, just to see it. You know what I mean? Just to see it. Um, but the thing is, and I'm going to ask you this. If you're the 76ers, and I know they got I, Isaac Okora, right? Um, I like but him. If you're, if, I like him, too. But if you're the 76ers, or do you want, we're talking about Evan Mobley and Tobias, but do you, if if P.J. Tucker can go, do you want P.J. on Evan? I mean, we know it's a height advantage for Evan, seven-footer going up against 6'5", but do you want P.J. to use his low center of gravity to try to muscle him around? I mean... That was the other option. Yeah, that, that mm -hmm. was the other option. I just went with the Harris one because I felt that one... Uh, we'll see maybe that one a little bit more, but definitely because uh, you could also use Tucker uh, chasing around Okora, but the same thing for Harris. But yeah, that that's also an option as far as the defensive assignment goes to slow him down and use your use your body and keep it on him to keep him away from the basket for those rebounds that we're talking about. You know what I could see? What I could see in the, like out of this, because I think that Darius Garland will have a field day of Hart and with Hart and Gardner, unless you know they may have to go to a zone, right? So mm -hmm. I would I could we could see this and, and and I'm just basing it off of what they what they've done in the past. Right. Tobias Harris length. Yep. Tobias is length. Now Tobias using his length. And then you put um James on which on guard? Isaac Okora, huh? On which guard? Either one of them? On I would I I know. I, I would I would do it with Darius. I mean, because I don't know yeah. if you know it's it's just, but now, now <laughs> yeah, that, that's the problem. That's the problem. But I, I don't think yeah. he could I don't think he could guard Donovan. You know what I mean? Now the quickness, see, that's part of the problem. But see, the thing is. Isaac Okora is a guy who's like, you know, they're P.J. Tucker. The only thing is he scored more points. You know what I mean? He does a lot of other things. But he's a guy that's averaging 6.4 points, 2.6 rebounds. You look at everybody else, they're all in double dig double digits. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like if you got to hide somebody, that's who you're going to put on. Like you want to hide them on that person, right? You think. But this is a dangerous team, man. And like – you look at it and you see that Danny Green came there. It's going to be there um, in the buyout market. I just think that this is a bad matchup, but I'm excited to see what the 76ers could do. But here we are. We're talking about, do you put the bias on this one? Do you do this? Do you do that? It's, it's just, it's bad matchups all the way around. 
Yeah, well, again, that's what that's what they play the games for to find out who out coaches the other, and we'll see exactly what take is, takes place tonight at the center. And Doc Rivers and uh, Bickerstaff going at it uh, in this one should be a good one, and hey, it could be a playoff preview as well. Everybody, thank you for making Locked On Seventy Six as your first listen every day. When we get to our next episode, we'll recap this game, talk a lot about it. On Thursday, what we saw, what took place in the game. Now, make your second listen, Locked On NBA. Locked On experts covering the biggest stories around the NBA every Monday through Friday in less than 30 minutes. is free and available wherever you get your podcast. Keith, can you let the good folks know where they can find us? Like my man D said, it's free and available. And wherever you get your podcast, you can also get this podcast. But make sure you listen to the Divine Given show and then the, the Sixers game and then the post game show with D. From D is going to be on 97.5 FM tonight from 6 to midnight, 6 to midnight. You're going to get all the Sixers coverage um, that you that you want and that you need and some great coverage from them. And then him um, and Tom McGinnis. And then afterwards, what you can do is you can make sure, well, during the game, make sure you follow my man D on Twitter at DivineG975. You can follow me on Twitter at Pompey on Sixers. And then you can read my stuff in the Philadelphia Inquirer at inquirer.com. Keith, enjoy the game tonight. Everybody, enjoy the game as well. We'll talk to you tomorrow, recapping Sixers Cavs final game before the All Star break. Thanks, everybody. Peace.